Morphological processes define different types of words, for example, words that involve processes that are fully productive, or words that are generated by means of more or less exceptional processes. In the following, we will first look at types, uh, the main types of morphological process. We'll then exemplify each main process in particular and eventually look at the main criteria that keep these processes apart. So let's start with an overview. Here are the main morphological processes. The central subdivision is between inflection and word formation. Now, in inflection, and this is the formal definition, we normally uh, have one base form and one operation that can be applied to this base form. Word formation processes involve a base form that is modified either by a morphological operation or you have a process where you simply concatenate one base form with several other base forms. Now the subdivision, the formal subdivision between the main types, derivation on the one hand and compounding on the, on the other is as follows. In derivation we do exactly the same um, as we did in um, inflection, we have one base form and one operation that modifies the base somehow. As you would see, sometimes we have uh, in inflection as well as in derivation the possibility of applying two or even more operations at the same time. And in compounding, we formally uh, or compounding is formally defined as a combination of one base, which you might in this case also called lexeme plus n base forms that is that are added to this base form so this is the formal definition of the main types of morphological process let's now look at them in more detail and first of all uh, look at some examples and some general information about these processes. Now inflection is often, as you may have found in the literature, spelled alternatively inflection. And it is normally subdivided into two types and that has historical reasons. One type is called declension. It is the inflection or the inflectional process applied to nominal categories such as noun, adjective, and determiner. And the other type of inflection is often referred to as conjugation, and the main category that is involved here is the verb. Let's look at some examples. Now, here we have a typical example of inflection, walk plus the morph ed. I'm using orthographical and orthographical notation here for reasons of simplification. Now, here we have a concatenative operation where you add a suffix to a base form. In the example mouse, which becomes mice, we don't have a concatenative operation, but a vocalic change, one particular type of non-concatenative -conc operations. And in go, which might become went, we have an example of suppletion. Now, the set of inflectional variants associated with one base form is called the paradigm. Let's look at some paradigms in more detail. This little tool here allows us to select a number of base forms and see how many elements um, the paradigm will eventually contain. So here we have love and you see the base form love can be associated with four inflectional variants. So the paradigm is relatively small. If we compare that with the German equivalent of love, lieb, liebe, liebst, liebt, etc., we will see that the paradigm is much larger. An even larger paradigm uh, is represented by the um, equivalent in Latin, 
ama, amo, ama is the, the basic form, amas, amat, amamos, etc., and you see the paradigm is even larger. The maximum number of elements in a verbal paradigm in present-day English is five, as you can see in this paradigm uh, of the base form, take. Now, typical example of derivation are things like act, active, where you have the operation of concatenation again. You add an affix here, a suffix. Or you might have things like destroy, which becomes destruction. And here, of course, you have um, sorry, I should have inserted a boundary. Destroy destruction. And here, of course, you have several operations that are active at the same time. On the one hand, we have affixation, or a concatenative operation. Then we have a vocalic change, where oi changes into a. And at the same time, we have the insertion of a particular consonant, destroy, receives a k at the end, destruction. So we have several morphological operations that are active in this particular derivative. The set of elements that constitutes the possible derivatives of one base form is called a word family. Now, in compounding, also sometimes referred to as composition, we have a word formation process that involves at least two base forms or two lexemes. So, we could have something like bath and then add room to it. Now, we have a compound bathroom. Now, this compound can serve as an input to the next step of compounding by adding bathroom or by, com by generating the next larger compound bathroom towel. Note that I'm inserting morph boundaries here that uh, in order to avoid the spelling problems whether a compound is spelled with a hyphen in a spaced form or in a solid form. And we could go on. We could use this as an input to our next compound, bathroom, towel, and then we could, could add designer. And here you see something very interesting. Now, compounds, of course, can undergo further morphological processes. For example, here we have design plus ER, a derivative, and we can even add an inflectional uh, morph at the end to turn in it into bathroom towel designers. Now, since formally it is easy to separate compounds from inflectional processes and derivational processes, compounds involve at least two base forms, we have to look at derivation and inflection in more detail and have to find out some criteria which keep these particular processes apart. Now, the first of these criteria is productivity. Productivity means or wants to answer the question whether a process applies to all members of a given class or only to some of them. Inflection is fully productive since all members of a specific class, let's say all verbs, can undergo a certain inflectional process. So let's take, for example, past tense. Let's take blue here. So if this is the morpheme for past tense, then we can simply say this morpheme can be applied to all verbal base forms. All verbal ba base forms have a past tense form, irrespective of the morphological operation that is involved. If, by contrast, we look at the, let's say, the affix eyes, 
which turns a noun into a verb, standard, standardized, we run into trouble if we take other nouns, like lizard, lizardize, well, that is hardly possible. So, standardize works, but lizardize does not work. The next criterion concerns the stability of the word class. Well, in inflection, the word class is not changed. So, if we take something like take and taken, well, in both cases, we have a verb. Whereas in derivational processes, if we take standard and standardize, we immediately see we have a noun here, but the whole thing becomes a verb. We have to be careful, though. The word class does not ne necessarily have to change, but it may change in derivational processes. In inflectional processes, the word class never changes at all. The next criterion concerns the stress pattern. Whereas in inflectional processes, so if you take something like take and taking, the stress always remains the same. So it's in both cases on the first syllable. Derivational processes may change the stress pattern. But again, we have to be careful. This does not mean that all derivational processes involve a change of stress pattern, but some of them. So if you compare standardize and standardization, well, then you immediately see that in standardize, the stress would have been on the first syllable, but in standardization, the stress shifts towards the end of the new derivative. The final criterion that keeps derivation and inflection apart is called semantic transparency. Here, we simply wrote down the word meaning. Now, whereas inflection is semantically fully transparent, Derivation is not always. So if we add our past tense morpheme ed, we know that the verb, the resulting verb, is always in the past. So the meaning is the past of a particular verb. If we add by contrast ion to a base form and get a new derivative, we might normally expect that ION means the act of what the verb describes. So standardization is the act of standardizing. But what about a word like commission? Now, commission is certainly not the act of committing. Or television is not the act of televising anymore. These criteria are primarily based on present-day English. In some languages, the criterion stability of stress pattern, for example, does not work. Here is an example from Welsh, a Celtic language. In Welsh, aval. 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 Aval means apple, and the plural Avalai. is Avalai. So you see, even in inflectional processes in some languages, the stress may change. So let's summarize. Formally, a distinction can be drawn between inflection, so this is inflection, this is derivation, on the one hand, and compounding on the other. One base form, several base forms. In order to distinguish inflection and derivation, we need further criteria 